Well, today is a significant day. It is a significant day in the history of... Happy Campers Happy Australia. Campers Australia yes. <laughs> so we have some moe that we're just about to crack. Yeah. So it's been 2,000 2, days, days since, since we, we left, left on our gap tour. On our gap year. Gap year, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Last time I looked at the calendar, there was 365 days in a year. Yeah. Not 2,000. No, no. It's, um, a year's not long enough to see Australia. Uh, anyway, let's crack this. Yes. Can you open I that shall. for me, please? I shall. Glenn's a non-drinker. If you've been following us, you know. Yeah, my job is to open bottles, generally. And, and eat the pies. Eat pies. So his celebratory drink, soft drink. But, um, oh, best sound in the world, I say. <laughs> I wanted to launch a cork. No. Ah! Ah! There you go. Oh, that's Perfectly not... filled. You're not the best pourer. There'll be a little bit in there. I'll have oh, a bit more, thanks. Oh, not the best pourer. Anyway, guys, we're going to have a chat to you um, about the ups and downs and the changes that have happened over 2,000 days. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, as we said, we set out 2,000 days ago on a gap year, didn't we? Yeah. So... We've only what, visited home. We visit home. Um, in that, that gap year, um, we thought we'd already seen a lot of Australia, quite luckily. Um, lots of long service leave that we'd been using. So in that gap year, we planned to visit the places we hadn't seen. Is that what we thought? Yeah, which was WA. Yep. Glenn had a bit of stress at work. Um, had a bit of a burnout really and we decided that look if we just take a year off and de-stress that was the plan. Mm. They used to call it mental breakdown. Is that what they did? <laughs> <laughs> anyway so we got travelling and um, Australia is so big to, to do um, what even the gap to fill in the gaps was yeah. we couldn't do it all in a year. Um, so financially we had saved a little bit more than what we yep. money was going a bit further than what we thought we were living on love we, a lot. we live on love a lot now yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah we decided look let's just see how long we can stretch this and we're still stretching the unveiling so this is our travel map that we've been of, using to plot our course um, so yeah all the black lines is what we've done in our 2000 days so as you can see, we don't sit still. Yeah, we need more lines in the middle here. Yeah. Where you can't take your caravan through the desert. Tanami. Well, Tanami. Oh, the Tanami, yeah, that's on the list. Yeah. See, even after all this time, there's still stuff on the list, isn't there? Yeah, Woomera, because we want to glow. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, or Maralinga. Maralinga. Right? Yeah. yeah, no, we've been to Woomera. Yeah, um, yeah the Maralinga, we want to glow. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> this... There's always places to go. But how things have changed? How have things changed? Well, that's the first thing I mentioned was that free camps aren't. Most of them aren't free anymore. There's usually $20 attached to them somewhere along mm. the line. Or, the free, yeah, there's yeah, still free camps. Yeah, donation used to be five bucks if you wanted. If you, but there are still free camps, don't get us wrong. Yeah. But they're not the beautiful camps that they used to be. They're roadside rest stops, really, aren't they? Mm. Um, so you don't get the free camps as often um, in those nice locations. Um, and it's been tough for the, well, the pubs because of COVID. We do a lot of country pub camping, um, stay behind pubs, um, which are free camps, but it's not free because there's plenty of this <laughs> and eating. As yeah, well. free camps are about $70 there. Yeah. Yep. Okay, K's driven is... 170,000 kilometres. Yep. We've got 155 on the range now. And we... The Everest was... We left with another vehicle, um, which was written off after we'd travelled 15,000 kilometres. So, 
we add them up, we've got 170,000 Ks. Excellent. <laughs> um, which average is about 85 Ks a day, um, which makes sense because we only ever stay put for three or four days. Yeah. Um, but we've slowed down a lot. It used to be kind of 500 K days and now it's... When we, when we first left, it's like everybody, you've got so much to see and you're still in work mode. Yeah. It took us five, four or five years to learn to slow down. Um, it's, that's not easy. That's we're not as slow as that. some people, you know. Cause we're not, because we don't stay put. Yeah, Other people put. will move 50 k's and stay at a fortnight. You know? We don't stay put. But um, that's... Three, three days is a long stay. Yeah, we... But that's usually driving around in those three days looking for... Yeah, points of interest. Points Obviously, of interest. we don't sit on our bums. Well, that's why we're so late talking to you today, because we were still out exploring... Yeah. And I thought, we've got to get back for sunset. <laughs> um, honestly, you never run out of things to see. Um, but yeah, we it took us... That's probably the biggest thing that we've noticed, is how long it's taken us to slow down. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. Because every year, you'd say, we've got to learn to slow down. And we seem to still be saying it. Yeah. Even just yesterday, you said that. We... <laughs> we did say that yesterday. You did. We haven't got enough time. We need to learn to slow down. Yeah. I don't know when we'll ever learn. Uh, where were we? Well, you know what? I reckon we've been waffling on and um, there's too much... There's a sunset that we're missing back there, Glenn. There is a sunset we're missing, yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, and we're, our neighbours are going to come over <laughs> for a day. And this is the best part of travel. They're waiting over there for us to finish this so that they can come and have a drink with us. Mm. So we might just have to do this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll do this another, we'll do this tomorrow or the next day. Okay. We'll finish up. Okay, and we'll get you some real facts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've moved camp a couple of days later, so we've had a chance to have a think about what we're going to talk about. Yes, yeah, we didn't have a clue what we were talking about, <laughs> apart from popping champagne. Yeah, that was the most important bit. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> what have we learnt, Glenn, that, um, what, yeah, what have we learnt, uh, you know, over the years? Caravans are shits of things sometimes. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to be first. <laughs> <laughs> You've got electrical, you've got gas, <laughs> you've got what they're made out of, you know, whether it be timber or steel, uh, you know, there's just always so many bits and pieces. Stuff so, to fiddle with. Yeah, yeah. And but, there's always something going wrong. Oh, not always something going wrong. No, it's not just, always. you've got to be uh, kind of on top of things. If you're living in it, you know, there's always bits and pieces. And you've got to be, you know, careful of the wind. So you don't have awning damage, stuff like that. You're always tinkering. Yeah, there's always something to, keep it right. well, something to think about. <laughs> well, Try I, not get bogged. <laughs> I've learnt that you don't um, don't really need much. Um, don't need... But when you're first starting out, you think you're going to need all these appliances and all this stuff. And really, you don't. Like... I would go as far as to say you don't even need a kettle or a toaster mm. um, to keep weight down and, you know, everyone, if you've got a caravan, you've got a grill for your toast, um, you can boil the water on, on a, in a saucepan even if you had to, but they're the two appliances we do have, is a kettle and a toaster. Um, and when we're off grid, we tend to use the jet the boil. The jet boil a because lot. Because it's faster than the kettle on the stove. Yeah. But that's all for appliances. Hmm. Simple. Keep it simple. And um, and we don't miss anything. We don't wish we had anything um, else. Um, you were yeah. saying about tools. Yeah, we tools. You know, like every time I go home, I tend to revise the tools. And I actually do that in the van too. Like as we said before, we go home every Christmas, and usually once or twice we might pop in for a week or two at home through the hmm. year. When we do that, we have a clean out. Yeah, have a clean out, you know, as far as tools go, you know, you started off with a full set of drill bits and 
and then whittled it down to three. <laughs> you know the ones that you use. Yeah, the ones that you use. Yeah. Um, and you know, you used to take all the hacksaws. And, I was worried you know. about that when you started culling tools, actually, because I thought I'd rather cull the caravan than you the tools, because if we got stuck somewhere and you didn't have that tool that you'd left behind, I would. Oh yeah. Not... It's, It'll be Vicky's fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. No, but it is. It has been a concern, but you cope. You'll find something else and make it work. It's just um, not necessary to take heaps yes, of stuff. Big shifter. Always carry a big shifter. That. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I've learnt: wine casks. Caravaner's oh, yeah. best friend. Yeah. Yep. Two liter cask, so you don't have to have that four liter cheap stuff. You can go to these new ones with a plastic bag. They're stuff. really quite expensive. It is quite expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with cask wine, you don't have the weight of the glass, um, and they fit into squishy corners in the fridge mm. when you take it out of the box. Um, doesn't look real nice when you walk to your um, neighbour's place to have happy hour. But um, mm. hey, take no one's pillow with you. no you one's pillow. Uh, people can judge. I don't care. Doesn't matter. Doesn't worry me. <laughs> Um, all right, so what makes life easy? Uh, the thing that makes life easy for me is the um, not having a jockey wheel. We tend to run oh, yeah. a BOS 270. I could not imagine going which, back to a jockey wheel. That, yeah. Which um, you just wind it up and down with an electric drill. Um, it's, it doesn't rely on hydraulics like the other brand, brand does. Um, which used to annoy me as a mechanic because most of the time if it ever lays down it tends to leak and then you have hydraulic fluid everywhere where this one doesn't where this one doesn't no so it and it stays on the front of the van all the time we just lift it up so it doesn't it, have to be stored yeah because it's got a flat plate and we use the flat plate all the time we haven't got a, any wheels hmm. to get in the way we just lift it up out of the way. The best thing for me, what makes life easy, is because we're mainly unpowered camping, I love being able to use my washing machine unpowered. And um, it, it's, it just runs from a, a small inverter. They, people don't realise how little power they use. Yeah. We don't have a fancy a... van with all the huge batteries and solar. Ours is a modest setup. And... Um, and I can still do my washing off grid. Um, just get water from anywhere. A pot um, doesn't have to be potable, unpotable yeah. water source. That's one because it's a uh, top loader. Top loader. Yeah. So personally, I would never have a front loader because you can't add water from anywhere. Yeah. You'd have to use your tank water all it's the time. It's nice to stick them up on the wall, but they are heavy because they've got mm. a, a counterweight. In them. We've never had one, so we can't say. No, you know, for never you, say never. Use, but um, I just think you would need to carry so much extra water, tank water, which you know we can get away with minimal, just finding water even from a creek using mm. your your shower water. Yeah. I love washing off grid. I don't know. That sounds stupid, but what makes it just makes life no, easy. It's easy. For you. <laughs> um, so living in a small space, how's that? Oh, sometimes it's. Um... <laughs> There's yeah, nowhere to go in an 18 foot dam, no, believe me. Comes to the wall, you know, you <laughs> just get in each other's way sometimes. Yep. The corridors aren't real wide, are they? No. <laughs> and last night we were sitting at the table inside because it was cold to have dinner, and um, you wanted something from over at the kitchen sink, which is only just there. Yeah. So I leaned over to get it. And I ended up with wine all through my <laughs> mashed potato and pie. <laughs> Not the wine glass yeah. over on the way. I mean, that could probably happen at home too, but it's a very small space. There's no escaping. It was pie with white wine sauce. You probably just need to, you probably just need to learn, um, know each other very well, know each other inside and out, and be able to read when your partner needs time alone. And um, yeah, yeah it's, we're not like that because we've been around. For well, we have. We, we we very much used to living together 24/7. Yeah. Um, but I know when you want to get away with your camera and take bird photos, and it's okay. Usually when we pull up. <laughs> yeah, leave me to set up. That's what he does. Yeah. 
<laughs> you yeah, sit it's down, level. On. I'm off. He's yeah. off. Yeah. 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 But yeah, you do sometimes like time alone, which I'm not one for that. Doesn't bother me. But I can read him. So Head, it's just headphones are a good idea. Yeah. Headphones. Yeah, we've only just discovered the last few yeah. years having headphones at night time, so one can sleep and one can still watch t telly or mm. do the internet or whatever they want to do. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's get to some dollars. I know everybody likes to know dollars, don't they? Don't when they're cleaning. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> it's a secret. Well, we've kept track of everything, every dollar spent for the 2,000 days. So I've got spreadsheet on spreadsheet on spreadsheet. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I could give you lots of information, but I've just chosen a couple of things that um, I thought would um, be interesting in our 2,000 days. Um, 804 of those have been free camps. Um, so that's a pretty big percentage considering they're becoming less and less. Mm. Um, and when we look at the overall average price of what we've spent um, on accommodation or campsites, um, our average nightly cost is under $10 a night for those 2,000 days. So um, we're pretty proud of that. Um, we do prefer the low cost or free camping but you can't always get it. So, you know, if we have to pay $50 a night, we do. Um, we might only stay one night instead of, you know, if we were gonna stay longer, but we don't not pay the expensive prices if it's all there is on offer in that area. Yeah, yeah it depends on the area, really. Yeah, obviously if there's a $50 camp and a $15 camp, we're gonna choose the $15 <laughs> one. Because <laughs> we're tired asses, yeah. But quite often they're in nice locations too, yeah. so. Um, that's our accommodation costs, so yep. pretty happy with that. Um, our everything costs. So we we have a weekly average um, of around seven to seven twenty a week, um, which isn't very much. But I'll have to explain. When we started out, you all know we were taking a gap year, mm. two thousand yeah, days later. Gap year. So when I started keeping track of things. Um, they were travel expenses because we still have a home, we ha still have expenses at home. So we still to this day, because I can't start including things now that I didn't from day one, we don't include car and caravan registration and insurance because they were expenses we would have had at our home anyway when we started out. So when you do the sums on those costs, um, it still works out that it would be only another 100, 150 a week um, extra, if that, mm -hmm. really. Um, I did some sums and it, it was like under $400 a month um, for those costs. So, yeah, 800 But you can't rely on that cost if you're only doing a 12-month run around Australia. Yeah. In the first 12 months, we spent more on lots of activities and that sort of thing. As time goes on, we've done those things. We can travel slower. Um, so the costs even out, so that's how we've managed to maintain that $700 to $720-ish a week yep. um, as an average. So it's not that expensive, really. Um, as I said, if you're doing 12 months, you'll want to be doing all the expensive stuff, so don't use our money yeah. <laughs> um, averages if you're for your annual lap. Thanks to everyone on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, it, it has made a difference to our budget. We are finally getting paid mm -hmm. a little bit from YouTube. Um, but let's face it, we've been doing it for years and years. Yeah, it's a long, it's been a long haul. Um, and we're grateful for you guys because you guys watching um, are the reason that now we are starting to earn a very small income from it. Yeah, um, we were doing it when they, I used to do two minute videos and just put them on YouTube because I didn't want them in my memory banks, <laughs> basically, you know. Yeah, and and, uh, and it was mainly just for our own personal. Always to wondered look how at. you got monetized. <laughs> yeah, so we're finally there, um, but it's not much. So you know, people think that YouTubers, or some people think that YouTubers make lots of money. Um, we make, even though we've been doing it for so many years, we make under a thousand dollars a month so under 200 about 200 bucks a week pretty much um so you can't live on that and for the amount of time that it takes we would spend probably 
40, 50, 60 hours a week between the two yeah, of us? Maybe. Yeah, between, between the, two the two of us. Of us. I, might, I tend to make the shorts and stuff. We work together Instagram, with... Instagram, but Instagram's a bit of a pain. <laughs> We've got different jobs that each other yeah. does, but if you add up your hours and you add up my hours, mm. um, so it's not a great hourly rate. No. But we're still really appreciative of yeah, everybody. Yeah. Yep. Um, it, you know, that does help out. Yes, thanks for everybody, YouTube, and thanks for the pie. <laughs> yeah, and those who have bought us a pie lately. Bought us a pie, yeah. Well, you know, you can buy us a coffee or a pie shows us, or coffee shows and us that pie. you like what we're doing and, you know... It's not a lot of money, but it's it's gratitude. We really appreciate that. We appreciate that. it, yep. yep. We certainly do. Uh, so well, anyone considering it, um, as any, far anyone, as YouTube, YouTube goes, you know. Oh, anyone considering YouTube, oh, give it a go. But don't go. expect yeah. that you're going to be rich. And don't think if you're doing 12 months that you're going to get a huge following easily. Yeah. It's, not, it's not easy. And we're still not at that point that we're going to commit to a weekly video. I don't want to. They take too long to we're make. far too disorganised. <laughs> I know. Well, we're too busy travelling. We're too busy. Yeah. You know, there's too much we to see. We want to have a good time. 2,000 well. days, and we've still got so much to see. I can't... That's one thing that you that I can tell you, is that you will never have enough time. Never have enough time <laughs> to see Australia. Yeah. There's always something slightly <laughs> different. But anyway, if you've considered travelling Australia and you're hesitant or you're scared um, or just the advice we can give you is just do it just do it yeah just do it you'll learn along the way um, you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring and um, there's plenty of people on the road that will give you help tips you've got an ant I've got an ant on yep. yeah give him a flick easy bugs we, you get very hang used on. He said, he hangs on top you get yep. very used to bugs <laughs> Favourite places? Mm. Yeah, that's hard. I you hadn't thought about that. No, I. But I still like WA and Quabba. Quabba blowholes yeah. and campground. Not Quabba. Yeah. Station. Station. Yeah. You but really like the blowholes, with, and I can't. I mean, I love that too. I love Quabba blowholes mm. as well, but. I can't go if as far. If we go far. state by, we'll have to do it state by state. I can't go as far as to say that I have a favourite place. All I say is that there is nowhere in this country that we've been that we have not liked. And everything, there's there's a positive in everywhere we've stayed. Um, I like Sydney much. <laughs> but Sydney is a beautiful city. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't take the caravan there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's... it's yeah. Getting around Sydney. Yeah, yeah. no, there's... There's no favourites. Um, favourite state, Tasmania and Western Australia. That's as much as I'll say. Yeah. Because they're yeah. as places more refined than that. I did like the Air Peninsula, but it's been a while, so we're going back. <laughs> that's just you do things two and three times. Yeah. Um, you always get a different experience. Queensland is good. Everything's uh, good, though. Yeah, New South Wales is good because we live there. There's heaps to see in New South Wales. Victoria, little, little town. It's, li Victoria's, there's lots to see in a small area, so you don't have to drive far. Yep. <laughs> yeah, drive far no. Anyway, that's, that's rambling because we haven't given you any favourites there. It's just yeah. everyone, no, exactly. everyone will make up their own mind on that one. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, thanks very much, guys. So if you... Um, like and subscribe, if, as always, if, please. If you like what you've heard today yeah. and if you want to, um, yeah, keep watching our adventures for the next 2,000 days. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Have you got a cheers? No. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank um, you. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you on the road. See ya.